Hi YouTube and welcome back to my music production basics series. Today we're going to be going over compression, which is one of the most important types of sound design and uh, music production plugins that you can use. So the basic idea of compression is volume attenuation. So if you have um, a waveform, you can see in this drummer track, we've got lots of little peaks. If any of those get too loud, we want to squash them back down. We want to fill the entire dynamic space and make sure the quiet things get boosted and the loud things get squished back down. So that's the basic idea of compression. Now, it ends up being a little bit more complicated than that. Uh, there's multiple different kinds of compressors, which we're going to get into. You can see some notes over in my notepad. If you want to take some notes yourself and follow along, feel free to pause whenever you need to. There are different parameters to compression. You get to change uh, how fast compression is going to be applied, how long it takes for compression to be released, when, what volume threshold your dynamics are going to have to hit for compression to be applied, as well as the ratio of how much we're squishing. So basically the idea is we're expanding the dynamic range to kind of fill the space. So think of compression as you're compressing the dynamics into a box. You have a cardboard box, you're trying to squish all that sound in there. Yes, you're compressing, but you're also expanding to fill that space, if that makes sense. That's how I like to think about it. So we've got a drum audio here, an acoustic guitar. This is just a default stock Logic drummer, and this is a uh, Apple Loop acoustic guitar. I sang along a little vocal part, and we're gonna talk about the four different kinds of compressors and show some of them in action on these three different types of tracks where you might want to use compression. So let's start off by going over each of the four most common types. Now there are more kinds of compressors than this, especially in the analog world. There's a deep and rich history of different kinds of hardware compressors. We're not going to go too into into too much detail in this tutorial as this is a beginner series. If you want to really just bare bones basics compressors, you really, in my opinion, only need a VCA and a FET compressor. The optical and variable mu also have their uses. A VCA compressor is voltage comp voltage controlled amplifier. This is very versatile. It's fairly transparent. It's fast. It's smooth. It doesn't add a whole lot of color. So this is going to be a great mastering compressor, a great bus compressor to mix in underneath your mix. An FET compressor is going to be your more aggressive, colorful compressor. So this is going to add character to the audio that it is applied to. It's aggressive, bright, the fastest attack and release. It's not going to be soft. It's not going to be subtle. This is good for hard peak limiting compression and adding color. An optical compressor is going to have a slower attack time, so it's going to take longer to be applied, and it's going to be a very natural sounding gain reduction. So this might sound good on something like a vocal, although in this case we'll be showing both VCA and FET compression on a vocals. Um, optical is another great choice. Uh, the fourth common one is variable mu, so this is sort of an older, based in hardware uh, type of compressor and it sort of has an envelope, so it's much slower than these other types. It's gonna be very gentle, very warm, very vintage sounding. So let's go ahead and just take a listen to this drum track uh, without compression applied. Now I'm going to be using Logic stock compressors. There's lots of great compressor plugins other than what you get stock. Um, if we go into Logic, we would just go to Dynamics and then Compressor. There's also multipressor, which we may talk about in a more advanced tutorial on compression. Today, we're just going to be doing standard compressor. Um, I've also got some like LA-2A simulations, more hardware uh, simulations downloaded, but those are third-party plugins, cost extra money. We're not going to get into it into the basic in the basic series. So, I went into uh, Dynamics, added a stock Logic compressor. Let's open this up and see what we've got. So. I went in and I actually grabbed a drum preset just to start us off. So this is a FET compressor, so this is more colorful. Let's turn this off and just give a quick listen. And then we're going to go over each of these six parameters, uh, maybe talk about this section and uh, you know our gain staging as well. And then we'll just kind of listen and play with each of the knobs to show exactly what they're doing to the sound. So here's the uh, raw drum track. Yeah, 
and uh, classic logic, we get a disc too slow. So we're just going to start that back. Right, nice and dry, just a clean, you know, uh, rock drum track. So let's go ahead and turn this on. Now, it's, this is going to start out subtle, and we'll go to more extremes so that we can really uh, focus on listening to uh, the changes that we're hearing. Already, the first thing that I'm noticing is our cymbals are getting a little bit more filled out. Um, what's happening is uh, everything's being brought down a little bit. So you can see in our gain reduction, but the cymbals are a little bit quieter, so those are getting filled back up. Uh, through makeup gain, which is making them match the snare and kick dynamics a little bit more closely. So here we've got our meter. This is the amount of gain that's being reduced by the compressor. Remember, we're squashing. So our first parameter here is threshold. So currently this is set to minus 24 and a half dB. That means until we hit minus 24 and a half dB, we're going to start squashing. Hey, it's me again from editing. Threshold is when you start applying compression. So when we hit minus 24.5, that's when it's gonna start squashing. That'll be more obvious, but I misspoke there. So because we're over that threshold, a little bit of compression begins to be applied. Now the amount that's being applied is a ratio of 2.1 to one. So that means the dynamics are going to be reduced twice as much for every amount over the threshold. So we can see this in the graph. So this is input on the x-axis, output on the y-axis. You can see it's just a straight, you know, one to one up until this threshold of minus 24 and a half and then after that our output volume starts to decrease so if we want to increase the amount that it's squashed we increase this ratio so one to one one to one is going to match and then we can increase the amount that it's squashed makeup gain is going to be gain that's applied after gain reduction. So let's say we reduce the volume by 3 dBs in here. If we then add 3 dBs back, it's going to raise everything. So you can see this moves the entire graph up. So what we want to do here is basically look at our input gain, look at our output gain. If we want to keep the same general dynamics while keeping our compression sound, we want to play with the makeup gain so that the output gain approximately matches the input gain. So right now we have a very aggressive, let's go even higher. Let's go to a, a create. Normally I stay between two and four to one for most compression. Let's just go really crazy and go up to eight so that we can hear a big difference. You can see here we're clocking in at around minus four and over here it was outputting around minus 12. So we might want to add up to eight dBs of makeup gain. take it down a little bit, those numbers are a lot closer now, and now you're really starting to hear the effect of the compression. Now attack is going to be uh, how fast the compression is applied, release is how slowly it's released. In this case, I kind of like the settings. Um, it's a little subtle and tricky to hear. So when we're all the way down at zero, it's super in and out, kind of woo, 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 kind of wubby. You know, it's really, it, it's a really intense ducking effect. So we don't really like that. If we put a really long attack in there, it's almost as if the compressor's turned off because it takes so long before it starts to apply. So let's put it back to you know around. I like this around 20 milliseconds. Release is going to be sort of the reverse effect. If it's super long, it's going to be really wub wub wubby because it's constantly pushed down if it's super fast it's going to be 
excuse me, if it's super fast, it's going to be really in and out because the compression is going away. And then if we put it all the way over, it's almost as if we had just lowered the total gain. The knee is going to be how sharp this angle is at the threshold. This is kind of subtle again, and it's not even in every compressor. So don't worry about the knee too, too much for the basics. Um, on, the ins on the left side, we can also play with the input gain going into the compressor, play with the output gain. So if it's you know really getting smashed, we can take it down a little bit. I prefer to do that either with the um, channel strip volume or with a gain plugin. So I tend not to touch these too much. You can also add a limiter if you'd like to your compressor. Although again, I tend to just use a limiter plugin rather than using the built-in one. So that's been a quick overview of this fat compressor on a drum track. So that's a really smashed, really colored effect. Now let's go on and uh, play with some acoustic guitar compression. So here again, I've just grabbed an acoustic guitar preset to start. Uh, this is on a Studio VCA. So this is going to be a little bit more transparent. This is a pretty clear acoustic guitar. It's a really nice tone from the Apple Loops library. So we don't want to do too much to um, color that because we like the tone that we've gotten. So this is, you know, a little bit um, medium, just very neutral. It's not going to be as clear as something like an opto compressor, but it's a little bit more apparent. Okay, so the dynamics in this guitar track are pretty smooth already. It is likely that compression was applied while this sample was being recorded. So this is an already compressed audio sample. So what we're going to be doing is going to be compressing something that's already compressed. So we're only going to really hear uh, pretty obvious changes. Also note that this uh, VCA compressor does not have a knee parameter, so we can't control that here. So you notice when I turn this on, it's going to be a little bit warmer. We're attenuating some of the high frequencies, especially on acoustic guitar. There's a lot of uh, very subtle kind of clicks that happen from um, the plastic pick on the strings, the fingers on the strings. As you slide up and down the neck, you might get some squeaks and other high frequency noise. So something that I'm noticing as we apply this VCA is it's starting to tone down that a little bit. It's adding a little bit of warmth keeping those dynamics um, just nice and smooth, very buttery. As we start to move the attack down, we introduce some of that kind of clicking back in. Again, this is just making an already great recording a little bit smoother. All right, let's move on to some vocals. I've been falling in love with you. Oh. All right, so that is a raw vocal recording. I've got a little bit of input gain. It's running through a SM7B and a cloud lifter uh, through my Apollo with a little bit of preamp gain going into it. Um, we're going to play with both a VCA and a FET compressor on this vocal. You can see just looking at the waveform, it's not a perfectly even dynamic. So what we're going to do is use compression to smooth this out a little bit, add a little bit of breathiness and a little bit of character. So let's open up our first compressor. We've got the VCA. This is the Voice Classic VCA preset just to start. So this is going to be our more transparent. 
early in the chain, we're going to focus on uh, a nice, clean, smooth leveling, so that VCA. Then after this, we're going to add a little bit of FET compression to add some color and some character to this vocal after we attenuate the volume. I've been falling in love with you. I've been falling in love. So this particular uh, setting on the Logic Compressor has fewer um, parameters here. We're actually going to switch to the Studio VCA just to get the attack and release so that we have a little bit more fine tuning. We could continue to play um, with just the threshold, the ratio, and the makeup. That's a more... Uh, it almost allows you to be more creative because you have less to think about. You're more in a uh, right brain creative mode than a left brain engineering. I need to be precise mode. So you can, you know, choose whichever kind of uh, mood you're in. You can go for more or less control. It's really just about using your ears and seeing uh, what you can do to make something that sounds great sound even better. So let's go and just play with some of these settings and see if we can smooth out this vocal. I've been falling in love with you. Oh. I've been falling in love with we're going to increase the attack a little bit on that falling where it really gets uh, pretty loud. We want to very subtly just bring that back down. So we're going to increase the attack so it ramps into it before it, you know, we don't want it to sound too aggressive. And then we're going to also increase the release so that it gets slowly brought back down. We're going for something subtle here. I've been falling in love with you. Falling in love with you. Oh. All right, so we've done a little bit of smoothing here. Now we're going to move into our uh, more colored FET compressor. So here I've got FET Vocal 01, another Logic preset. I almost always start with a preset. Um, I almost always tweak the preset. It's nice to have a starting point, in my opinion. I've been falling in love with you. So you can see it wasn't doing anything before. There's no gain reduction being applied. Uh, that's because the preset had it at a pretty high minus 10 threshold. We're going to bring the threshold down a bit so that we can start kicking this compressor into action. I've been falling in love with you. Falling in love with you. Oh. I'm going to increase the input gain a little bit here. It's really quiet coming in. I've been falling in love with you. Oh. Oh, the, input, the auto gain was set to uh, 0 dB in this, so that's why we're getting a uh, pretty different. Um, input and output, so I'm actually going to put that back to zero. I've been falling in love with you. Oh. So this vocal is getting very breathy. Um, I think that's a good thing in this particular uh, audio sample. So let's just turn them both off and do a quick comparison, quick A B. I've been falling in love with you. Falling in love, falling in love. So that, yeah, that fallen just really gets smoother. It starts to get uh, a lot more of the subtle characteristics of the vocal brought out. Again, this is subtle 
compression can be as apparent or as subtle as you want or need it to be just by playing with how extreme you are setting these knobs. And that's basically all I've got for compression. I've been falling in love with you. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Be sure to uh, leave any questions you may have down in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe for more uh, Logic Pro 10 and music production tutorials and lessons. I've got a, a new vlog up on my channel as well talking about um, what I've been up to in quarantine, uh, the songs I've been mixing, talking about um, kind of the thoughts that are going through my mind while I'm mixing for other clients as well as myself. Uh, so be sure to check that out if that sounds interesting. And I will see you next time. Next tutorial is going to be on reverb, which is super cool. So stay tuned for that. Have a wonderful morning, evening, night, day, afternoon, whenever you may be watching this. And goodbye.